friends, you're dead. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead. This movie is so bad that as soon as you start watching it... You are dead now. Yep. This is a movie that's really, really something else. Like, trust me, do not go into this movie alone without aid. It will kill you with how bad it is. Well, mind, if you're, if you're already dead while watching this, then you don't really need the aid. That's what the afterlife is for, Dwibs. I'm here to bring to you our commentary of Ghost Dad. Basically, Bill Cobb CB has, well, he was one of the most brilliant TV comedy actors and writers. Except when he but, tried to get into the world of film. He had some successes here, but, well... Ooh, boy, did he not have that much luck. We had a lot of failures, some really infamous, like Leonard Part 6 and this film. Ghost Dad. <laughs> Alright, audience, let's not beat around the bush. We'll tell you plenty more about the team behind this movie after we start. Now, this is on a DVD, so... We're watching basically start on the black and white globe of the Universal Pictures logo opening. Mm. You know the one. All right. Yeah, top for Universal Pictures logo. Awesome. Come on, get it kind of done, Three, two, one, click. Coming soon, Bill Cosby in the Dark Universe. So, so yeah, this was made in 1990. It's an American fantasy comedy film directed by Sidney Poitier. Sydney Poitier. Why do we see all the Universal? What? Basically, this was, I Is think... It? Was this... this like Universal's anniversary or something? Yeah. Probably. This was supposed to be a magnum opus film of theirs. Uh... Ghost. Yeah, Universal's magnum opus, Ghost Dad. Yeah, the 75th anniversary. There you go, Dibs. So, yeah, Wait, Universal... happy anniversary! Didn't Universal... Universal turned 112, so... You know what to say, Sidney Poitier... Ah, uh, look at that too. We live in a time where the 80s were trying to die, but not just yet. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Sidney Poitier? He was the first... You don't know, the... you don't know who Sidney Poitier is, Dwibs? Dwibs? No. Sit in the corner. He's like the Pele of uh, film. Yeah. Basically, what he was did, the first... Did, 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 did the Pele, the Pele just really stop near the end of his career? No, that, no, 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 no. Dwibs, Dwibs, Dwibs. Poitier's career isn't even over yet. Jesus Christ, look. He was the first Bahaman and first black actor to win an Academy Award for Best Actor and the Golden yeah. Globe Award for Best Actor for his role in Lilies of the Field. And in this case, he's transitioned to directing? Yes. For the most part, he does some acting here and there, but for the most part, he's a director. And he's actually... Narration. Mm. Uh. It all started on the day that I died. Pretty much. Ooh. Henry Mancini. <laughs> Whoopee. Sadly, this is the last film Poitier would direct. Probably for a good reason. Well, it was received negatively, and it did it. Did, was it a financial flop? Uh... Let me check. Uh, um, because those are the two things that can kill a director's career, no matter how long it is. Let's see. It was critically panned and wound up on many critics' worst of 1990 and worst of all time lists. We don't know the budget, but it grossed $25 million. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't seem much. There's no word on it being a box office um, failure, but either way, though, the critical panning probably was uh, enough. He recorded a, t a story, bad story time to tell them. Because, oh... Tio, he's one of those workaholic fathers who's so busy that can, he has to record can himself. Can Oliver just kill that trope because I'm so sick of seeing it in movie and they're still doing it to this day? Mm -hmm. Basically, the best way to describe this is them trying to do the Cosby show, but done more seriously and with death being a main factor. Like, I don't, I'm not going to pretend that this is not a thing because it's actually reality for a lot of families, but... You know, Hollywood. There are ways to tell this type of story without sounding redundant, like you're doing. 
he somehow manages to guess exactly the time intervals that they will respond to it. Unless he actually has some practices, which in this case really is even more awkward in hindsight. Oh uh, boy, a comedy um having um having all uh, having like quite a few writers. And I I really just have to wonder what was Bill Cobb's what was Cosby's bad luck with films? I mean, seriously. It's like with Martin Lawrence. The guy should have been wonderful in films, yet somehow they always landed projects that just screwed it up. They they had really bad agents. Yeah. Also, to be fair, the Bill Cosby's type of comedies was something that never really caught on on me. Well, yeah, he yeah he was definitely one of the definitions of sitcom comedy. So what what exactly is Bill Cosby's shtick? He's a dad is, who's is, way is, too busy, doing, so he has to record no, stuff. No, he means in general for comedy, doing funny noises. Yeah, basically he he like he has a really interesting voice that allows him to. Yeah, let's see this. What are you doing? Oh uh, boy, I can't imagine that comedy getting old. No, 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 no. There actually are a lot of oh. actors who can pull that comedy for a long time, like. Case in point, Eddie Murphy, whose voice is his strongest weapon. I guess in terms oh, of this movie, they really oh, boy, to boy. we're about to get some slapstick, uh, aren't we? Just get it over with. We know what joke you're gonna do. Uh. Uh, careful is, what you is, wish is, for, is, honey. Is is Bill's wife telling him to go die? Uh, Pedro, now that's his daughter. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Oh my god, oh. he actually managed to not fall. Wow, the movie literally teases you. Yep. It's like that episode in CSI that opens with a guy with a nail in his, in his eye. Throughout all the episode, it teases you in situations that makes it look like... So the character, Cosby's character here, cheaped out on getting an actual birthday cake, so he just covered a hat in whipped cream. Oh, because uh, that's funny. Wait, 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 hold on. Remember that line, dressing up in a bunny costume for a whole week. That's, that's actually foreshadowing. A bunny kills him? You uh, wish, Bruce Dwayne. Willis from Norfolk kills him? You wish, Dio. Um, what are you doing? What? Basically, he's busy because he's trying to get this money deal with a company. So if everything goes perfectly fine by Thursday and the deal clears through, he's going to be handled financially and he'll have more time to spend with his family. Gee, I wonder what's gonna happen. Think of it like three days left until retirement. Nothing. 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 <laughs> uh. So, also, in case you, in case you need, also, in case you needed to remind that this was done in the eighties. So basically, as a means to appease his oldest daughter, he's letting her have the car mm. for the day. Yeah. Uh, I forgot, Leaves. What's your stance on 80s music style? I'm really mixed on it. Mm -hmm. Similar. So some of it's good, but some of it just blends in with the other. <sighs> Similar, but more in a positive way, in a sense that I am, I put moments where I, the music just kills the mood. But I have also an acquired taste for a lot of 80s type of music. If it needs, just needs to be done right. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Cindy Lauper in uh, The Goonies. Jesus. There's a reason why the talking funny comedy is as uh, being almost demolished these days. Eddie Murphy reasons. Eddie so. Murphy thankfully keeps it alive, but yeah, this is one of the problems well, with in, the... in general, like, uh, the entire idea that they want to base entire comedies just by someone talking funny. Especially because in some cases, most recently, it can become, um, say, become, uh, you know, 
falls into yeah also annoying but also stereotype and you know also that oh like uh, don't worry to you it's uh like half of the um, family guy segments uh, are nowadays are just people talking with a funny accent oh don't don't worry to you yeah. ba- let, let me assuage your fears good news and bad news that's not the movie's worst problem the bad news is you'll be wishing that was the movie's worst problem Yay. Because, yeah, that's another thing. For as much as it shows up in the intro, that's actually not so much the focus. Which, on the one hand, is a good thing, but, uh... Hollywood, you do want to remember why you're hiring Bill Cosby, right? You know, one of the great comedic actors of the time. Like, you want to maybe actually play to his strengths? Oh, 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 let me guess. The, the, the next bit of this movie is going to be all the death fake outs, and then you'll actually die by a more minor thing. Oh, come now, Dwibs. That would be just stupid, contrived, cliched, and dumb. It is, it is isn't it? I'll just let you see. <laughs> okay, so if he doesn't fall down the stairs, if he doesn't crash his car... This is the worst the Final Destination movie I've ever seen. Well, what's going to happen? He sits on his... Someone plants a bomb on this welcome chair to, or something. Welcome to Devil 2. <laughs> this time it's like a bajillion people in the elevator at the same time. Hey, at least we got Bill Cosby. Okay, seriously, you know, look, if the elevator... Uh, Cosby is not the devil in this situation. Okay, look, here's a... It's funny you mention that. Okay, here's the thing I have to point out here. Okay, so the weight's too much to the elevator. My question is that why is there not a sign for the occupancy outside the elevator? Don't they usually come with that stuff? What? Mr. Nero. Really? Mr. Nero. You were That's, saying something uh, about a devil, T.O.? Um, not just that. It's really a bit insensitive to call one of your no, characters. No, guys, don't you see? That's why the Mr. Nero. No, 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 no. T.O., 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 that's... a remake of this specific scene Tio, right he, here. He ain't making fun of him, T.O., that's his actual name. Yikes. And... Uh, that's the time where he falls. I love... Gee, yeah, I... Man, he got out, surprise, he got surprise, out. surprise that actually no one was inside. You think that uh, he cheats that, but other people die in his place. I love how the elevator had um a higher beeping sound program for just when the elevator yeah. has to fall. It's also sad that because this type of setting, you know, teasing you with a character's death that never comes even void in a setting then, so very nice, can work relatively easily. But yeah. here is just... There. I know, right? Not that particularly funny, but it should oh, be. Oh, 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 I got another prediction. He gets hit by a car. Well, just watch, Dweebs. It's like in Casper, Dweebs. You, you think he's gonna be killed by someone, but then he just nope. uh, inadvertently falls into a pit. Okay, pay attention to this scene. Mm-hmm. Also, that taxi is huge. What what's this set in Los Angeles? I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. Who are you? Gotta go fast. Isn't oh, that that guy someone from? Wants to, someone wants to murder him. Wait, is this? The... Hold on. Is this the guy who did the the, the old man in Home Alone? I don't know. Yeah, it looks like him. I'll check. What the fuck? Jesus, Curtis like Birch. That. Oh, he's a he's a he's a cop. No, or uh, an escaped convict. Oh, joy. Oh, he's gonna be killed <laughs> by a satanist. Roberts Blossom. Let me check his filmography. Uh, no, he wasn't in the. He wasn't in this one. Basically, oh. this guy is a Satanist. Oh. Brilliant. Um. Huh, this beer guy was in the Naked Gun uh, two and a half. And also in Blair Witch 2. Oh, jeez. Mm. <laughs> Terrible taste, man. You know, for kids. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if that's all it takes to convince him that he's Satan, just say, I'm Satan. Um, it's not really the time to be trying to put it in comedy to this. Funny faces and everything. Okay. <laughs> and I guess he exited the wrong way and falls. Well, he's clearly going out the wrong way. It's like in Casper again. Holy shit. There you go. Now I think he actually dies. If I remember correctly, I haven't seen this movie since... I haven't seen also, this movie since 91, I, know it's I think. Big, I know it's a bit tall, but I'm sure that falling from that eye into the water, yeah, it can break some of your bones, but not kill you. Wait instantly. for it. You see... Uh, Wait for it. You... There we go. Crisis okay. averted. All right. Then. You see all you younger people. Or not. Movie. I can't tell Can if they're just... trying to be funny or suspenseful here. That's how bad this is. This this is just stretching the movie to no end. And again, remember, this is a this is a bit unpleasant. Oh, yeah, and also kind of mean spirited. Oh, he's gonna grab the wallet and then the car tips over and yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, uh. And it explodes. Nope. Yeah, I was pretty. I was fairly certain there was the wall in the water that he dies. Um, you see, uh, all you young people out there, back in the back in the early nineties, there was this thing called the VHS, and I actually rented one from a video a video rental. Um, oh, uh, never mind. Fools never, you never mind. again. He's just fine. How did he survive that? Maybe he survived Scott Shelby style dibs. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The officer kills him. But beam by the boom. You know what's you know sad, Jova? But that TV's parody of Cosby is funnier than this. Um... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you wet yourself. The cop's taking a piss right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna get it. Nope. Oh. Turns out he was dead. Oh no, please. Uh, really? We're making that type of joke. Turns out, so turns out he's, uh, well, he's not all there. So he did die and, uh, off the bridge. So how are you managed to stand on the, on the bridge? Like, I, I always love how in these ghost movies, it's very selective in how they what they can stand. Oh, on and... trust me, Tio. This movie takes the cake with ghost rules. Like I can like there was that movie with the Patrick Swayze ghost that actually tried yeah. to actually tried to you know reason with these and explore these themes, but most of them don't. I think they're actually going to explain why. Is this, well, is this, is this a Nicolo Is that or a Nickelodeon show? I think that was double there. Yeah. Oh, these effects are terrible. This movie hasn't aged all that well, has it? No, no it has not. No. So he can stand on a hard wooden floors and gravel just fine, but he faces through carpets. Well, believe it or not, guys, those are part of the ghost rules. Ugh. So... No, no, time, time check. Bill Cosby has an hour to reason the situation. Oh, and he can sit on the seat team. perfectly fine. Brilliant. Oh, by the way, they can see him. How? Wait, just listen to you.
but standing in the light uh, doesn't make it. <gasps> and before you, know, you the, were... fa the fact that we are seeing this from Bill Cosby's perspective makes this... Oh, there you go, finally. And believe it or not, Tio, yes, there are scenes where he's clearly in the light, but people can see him. Uh, of course. Ah, so this is like the Superman 4 of comedy. Also, isn't it a bit insensitive that a black person can be seen only when the lights are off? Uh -huh. like, this movie is going way overboard with the Okay, subtext. of all movies to copy, why Superman 4's silly inconsistent if you step in the light, this will happen and this will happen if you're not in the oh, light. Oh, by, yeah. by the way, they can't hear him. What? Wait till you see how they're supposed to hear him. Well, first he's gonna try sign language. Two words. No! No! This is supposed to be a kid's movie reminder! A family picture! Why don't you just write it down? Also, did it really, like... Just write it down and show also, it. Also, not, not, not just that, Dweebs. As an Italian, people failing with body language is kind of even more aggravating, Dweebs. What the fuck? There's a simple gesture you can make to represent the fact that you have been- you have died. You know, 1990 had quite a few infamously bad movies. There was Godfather Part 3, there was Rocky V. I'm guessing this- Yay! We finally understood what Dad's saying! This warrants the happy music track! Holy shit, this movie. That's right, folks. We wasted some In Stanley... front of a children on the last. So. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burp. Yeah, if it's Casper so was, if Casper was awkward with his uh, changing tone pace, this is a fucking roller oh, coaster. No, no, no! Trust me, trust me. This makes Casper look sane with the tone shifts. I am not kidding. Well, considering the themes, I'm willing to compare Casper to this being the Citizen Kane. Reminder: In 20 minutes, we've seen humor, comedy, drama, Satanism, freaking Satanism, penis joke. Huh? Oh, what the fuck? Telepathy. Ghosts are telepathic. Just listen. Oh. Right, the, the mother died. See, he can't talk properly because he has to think it to them. You, you know, you can just thinking without moving your lips. Uh. No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. He has to think while fuck? moving his lips. Okay. I have to go now. My planet moves. <laughs> okay, get ready. You be dying on the way back to his planet. Get ready, Tio. This is where the movie starts to go insane. Even more so than it already has. Uh... Paranoia, paranoia. Everybody's coming to get me. <laughs> And we... Complete with alien type of music. Speaking of alien types of music, Tia, there's a special sound effect they include in this movie. Uh, I'm sorry, who the fuck are you? Is that St. Peter? Just listen. What? Um, what is he doing? He's out of sync. Also, who's these? Just Let me check. What? See, basically, Tio, because he died, he was out of sync with his, uh, voice on Earth. So, this guy had to hook him up to give him an electrical charge, and it's essentially Skype. That's uh, why he was talking funny. What? Is... 
Also, That's... this guy is Ian Bannon, a very famous uh, Scottish actor who was in Braveheart or in 77 uh, in Glorious Bastards movie. So what, so what wacky hijinks have I missed? Oh, quite a Insensitive bit. Insensitive stuff, I believe. So. But he That's also got flown there. here. Oop, out of sync again. Basically, when he's angry, his voice will slip out of sync and lag. <sighs> That's an actual Wonder rule, the... folks. Keep a list, because there's plenty Wonder more where that meant... came from. Wonder if this is meant to cover up like a movie problem of having poor lip syncing or something during ADR. That wouldn't excuse the sound. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's what it's like our crap. It also uh, just makes the process terrible, of, uh, it, it also just makes the process of making the movie more complicated because in this case you have Bill Cosby having to just move his lips randomly and then uh, dubbing in post production. Yeah. Here we are, the rule book. The the fairy parents uh, rule book of uh, Lucky Mori made more sense than this. So. I mean, guess there's a problem with the machine, and he cannot send him back. No, he can send him back. Thursday, huh? Uh, ba just explaining, dude. Basically, Bill Cosby has been whisked away to London, and this guy is a paranormal researcher. London? Yep, we're in London right now. Gee, because this totally looks like London, am I right, guys? It's in a castle. London enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the deal. If he doesn't deal with whatever he needs to by Thursday night, he's going to fade away and not be able to cross over. It's like when Power Rangers nowadays, when they're filming in New Zealand, try and make us think there's like an America or something. Now, normally, he'd be fine with this, only... Oh wait, hold on. Listen to this. I think they're gonna do it. Those eyebrows, man. His name is Edith. Ah, uh, British American. And he was British named after Joseph. his grandmama. Ah, uh, comedy. We waste how much time on this uh, for that joke? Bill, I'm not sure it's the best time to do this type of joke. Listen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Listen to the sound effect. Well, not that one, but wait, listen to what he uses to you send him back. Here we go. I uh, guess it's the, it's the tardy sound effect. Nope, even better. Listen, there you go, just this, listen. This is actually one of the secret forms of a doctor. <laughs> Bill Cosby. No, yeah, this guy. It's a lightsaber really? sound effect because, well, um... Really? It's a stock sound effect that's easy also, to but get. Yeah, also, that thing looked like a sonic screwdriver. Yeah, Honestly, but... We've, there's something we're missing here. You see? It totally is London. But yeah, they actually used the lightsaber sound effect. Now, here's kind of an issue here. There's one little teeny problem. He never filed for life insurance. Oh, shit. Yep. So, what you're telling me, Jove, is that the worst thing in your afterlife is the lack of life insurance? Oh, Basi that's the thing, it's for his children. Basically, life insurance is... Uh, very, okay. very yeah. Trust me, Pedro, you want to file for life insurance if you want your family to be set if you uh, die es es Essentially, without life insurance, his kids will have to be, you know, uh, thrown out of the house and everything.
Yes. Funnily enough, though, um... Oh, wait, um, listen. It... Just tell him you're not well. Uh-oh, we have a problem. Ugh. Oh, yeah, he has to concentrate in order to hold on to things. This, to be fair, is a more common element of Ghost Trip, so I'll let that one pass. Well, apparently, um, apparently the direct, apparently neither Sidney Poitier nor Bill Cosby were actually meant to be in the film in the first place. It was originally supposed to be directed by John Badham and star Steve Martin as the main character. So it's another case of actor kind of got the table scraps of what another actor was supposed to get. Brilliant. Yeah. Jesus. Maybe this maybe this comedy maybe this was meant for Steve Martin more than Bill Cosby or something. This definitely feels like something that would have been more up Steve Martin's alley. So yeah, now he has to go to work because of this one contrived reason that if he wants to get things all set, you know, in order for the check to clear on Thursday, they'll be out of it. Although here's a little incy teensy wincy problem. He's dead. Oops. But here's another thing. Notice how, you know, he had a freaking paranormal researcher a tractor beam him all the way to London? Yeah, for some reason, he's the only ghost that paranormal researcher has come across. There's actually a reason for that, but it's a real stupid reason. But here's a, here's a real issue. This problem could easily be solved if he went to a, a bout of scientists and researchers saying, Hey, I'm a ghost. You can study me as long as my family is covered for life. That would be actually reasonable, Joel. We cannot have that in this movie. You know, okay, KK, okay, okay, look. If the main conflict of this movie weren't about money issues, I understand why he doesn't do it, but it's literally money issues. Like, this isn't even like Casper the Friendly Ghost where, you know, the whole thing was about trying to come back to life. This is literally a problem about making sure that the people who are alive are taken care of financially. In which case, how did you not come to a better conclusion than this convoluted scheme? Also, the pacing is extremely fast. Like, we're only 30 minutes in and we have all these things dumped onto us. Oh, and don't worry, Tio. The movie's gonna get crazier. And I guess the alcohol goes through his body because he cannot drink. Watch. Let me say that if he does medieval, this type of joke way better. The music is telling me that I'm supposed to feel... Sad here. Cry, Be Pedro. Don't, cry. don't you see, guys? Man it's... Man orders you to cry. Oh, don't you see, guys? He's such an absent-minded guy that he didn't think to make life insurance for his family, even though his wife has already died and didn't... Well, okay, I think she did leave stuff for them, but you'd think he'd get the message that, hey, I should get life insurance. Like, that's... Seriously. Look. Like, okay, it's one thing thinking, oh, I'm not gonna die soon enough, but there's another being overconfident and not... Uh... You know, prepare having a safe for safe, of course. Especially, <laughs> especially when you're the only living parent left of two that of which one has already died. Uh, what the music is telling me now. Also, yeah, he's supposed to be in the light, but oh, there you go. Ha! Maybe he's dead. Ha! That tired. Watch Arnie this. did that joke better. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, those eyes are. Don't you see, Teo? She's a she. Don't you see, Teo? She's a, a smart a character. Therefore, she has these huge ass glasses. Because as we all know, nerds wear these huge ass glasses. Uh, oh that, wait, hold on. There's the one lamp left on. Ha! Dickens, get it? The because, uh, a cri because you know, the Christmas story. I'm with... smart. That's why I call Dickens. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to say this right now. Most of the antics we get would be so easy if he just explained that he's a ghost. Like, he could even do his regular daily activities if he just told people also, he's a no, ghost. Also, I'm sorry. The old subtext of... Uh the ghost being able to be seen in the dark and you're applying it to Bill Cosby here. That, mm. I'm sorry. It's something you can't ignore. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, and yeah. it's very insensitive. 
Like, I, I can't believe no one in the production of this movie actually thought about this. I can't. This was made by the guy whose one of his famous lines was, They call me Mr. Tibbs. You'd think he would have caught on to this subtext. Oh, Australian lawyer's goody. Good eye, mate. Don't... I mean, I'm not Australian myself, but they're part of the Commonwealth, so don't drag them into this, please. <laughs> That's like dragging Canada into a bad joke, because they're Commonwealth too. Oh, but hold on, guys. He also has to take his life insurance physical today. Here's a bit of an issue, though. As a ghost, he doesn't have bodily fluids, which you kind of need for a physical. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, goody. So, yeah, he has to wear all this stuff so that uh, no one will notice part of him is invisible. Yeah. Also, high actor who was in funny stuff. Forget what that guy's yeah, name is. Guys, so, he's, so he's the American guy who's in a lot of stuff, but no one knows what his name is. Let me check. I'm not quite sure what she is. Looks like the Invisible Man. Reference. <laughs> Looks yeah. like. And the doctor is completely okay with seeing a patient in a dark room. No. Just. Okay, no. you know, something is wrong when even Pat Adams seems to know better how doctors work. Like, if, if before wasn't a clue, this should have been the point where the director should have said, Stop, let's try again. Seriously, Poitier, what were you thinking here? You're supposed to be against this. Oh, by the way, he has no heartbeat. So what's he gonna do? Don't have a heartbeat. <laughs> He's going to use a tape recorder. How's that work? There's so hear vibrations coming from uh, the Yeah, up. um, you know, Doc, um, my mom's a doctor, and uh, stethoscopes don't exactly malfunction like that. They're, yeah. you know, stethoscopes. How did that work? I don't... Even, even then, Jova, usually a common method to measure heartbeat is also using your hands in case that you don't have that at hand. And did you all see the... this movie, by the way, Jova? No, well, no, I don't, I don't think she is. Why should you should subject her to this? And considering how she was a big Cosby fan, thank goodness she did not. Yeah, because that'd be... Uh... It's basically, it'd be like my mom seeing a bad Hugh Jackman Ooh, skeleton. Oh, your mom's also a What? Uh, okay, so now they need yeah. to take an x-ray of him. Oh, I see. So you get it from I her. wonder okay. what kind of mm -hmm. goofy hijinks will happen. Well, then again, I oh, also... Oh, my freaking my God. Me to Julie Andrews, so. My freaking God. You know, x-rays do not work like this. You can see the organs within them. Oh my freaking god. Mm, get spooked, mate. Uh, you know what? You know what, Shova? Yes? For the sake of restoring our faith uh, in this kind of, in, you know, uh, African-American humor, I propose that as a part of this commentary, um, oh, okay, that was stupid. Basically, he said, I need some privacy, and then that nurse goes all, hee <laughs> Oh, uh, no. Uh, yeah, this what's your, what's your idea, Pedro? Because this joke is unfunny, so let's just talk about something else. Uh. Yeah. You're seeing this right, <laughs> audience. He's going to use someone else's urine sample. And he's looking with that smile on his Pedro, please continue. You were saying, yeah. Pedro? Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, my proposal is that we watch on YouTube um, the Matt TV skit called Bing's uh, Cosby's Crib, which is a parody of the Cosby show, and it's hilarious. Um... Orlando Jones, the guy who plays Bill, Cos Bill Cosby in that uh, skit, he's hilarious, and he makes such a great impression. I'll uh, show you guys after this. I'm in we, favor. We could, even, we, could, we, we, could uh, even make it, we could even make it part of the commentary, why not? Uh, 
I'll post the video even for for you guys to put it. We can make it part of the comedy, or we can make it its own commentary. Part of the commentary. No, well, no, no. The real oh comedy God. is in the skit that I'm gonna show, not okay. the here. And yes, he completely got away with that. You know, it's not like there's DNA in that pee. Uh. He would be. Also, one... what is the music trying to tell me? That that guy's going to be mentally scarred for the rest of his life. Thanks, Ghost Dad. Don't, don't you get it, Dad. This is wacky and funny. Fuck this movie. You're... Honey, if nobody's found out he's dead already at this point, I think you're you fine. You know, honey. You know, yeah. honey. You're oh. taking this whole thing about me being dead pretty well. Some oh. people would have questions. Oh, basically, basically, her biggest fear, though, is that if people were to find out that she, that her dad is dead, she'd be the laughing stock. Because, aha, your dad is dead. Really? Really? The bullies in this movie are that one-dimensional? Oh, you know, way too... You know Oh my God, Jova! I just realized it's like in that, in that it's like in that Family Guy cutaway where Peter's like, "Bah, Mrs. Is mommy, bah, Mrs. Is mommy," and it's like a. Except that was played for stupidity. Oh, speaking of bullies, this guy ain't exactly a bully, but he's the dick boy who she admires wants to be deep friends with, but you have no idea why because he's really a jerk. Just listen. Hmm. Man, what you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> the All right. Uh, this is. This is. Is so he trying? Is he to trying to him? suffocate him or something? Yeah. Like, what the uh, fuck movie? Uh, that was actually a realistic reaction. Yeah. I mean, I know the kid's, you know, a perverted creep and all, but he but didn't that's even... not the way... It, it, again, it's like that film goes with Patrick Swayze. The reason your, your ex-best friend is trying to cheat your wife, kill him. Why not? Oh. Uh, okay, this is possibly the closest thing this film actually gets to being funny. Alright. Uh, did I do that? Surprisingly, they don't do that joke with the kid. He looks like Urkel. Come on, he's a bit fat, but he looks like Urkel. Ah! <laughs> uh. It's the time of the year. Yes, we all know that time of the year when young women get mutant now, powers. I thought you said nervous breakdown. Oh, Let's nervous see, breakdown. what does he has? Oh, does he has? Does, is this movie having a Rotten Tomatoes score? Oh, 7%. Jeez. Still too much, honestly. 7? Why? Well, it's, it's much higher than most other films. There's quite a few yeah, other films we've seen. Honest. I can find I, I can find some movies with like one percent, but at least I can find some enjoy. This is dry, bow to the bone. I wouldn't say it's dry. Like, it's just the it's incredibly mean spirited. Like uh, compare again ah, with Casper. Spirit, mean spirited. <laughs> Not just that, lives. Casper had uh, its mean spirited moments with the, the uncles and everything, and that also the uh, flip flop of tones uh, in shifting. Where did we? But, but at least it had actual moments that were actually enjoyable. This one has nothing. What is it with this era? What is it with this era of films about ghosts and stuff? I wonder when that genre died. Um, never went away. Never, remember, yeah, remember, jo remember the Pit Dweeb's um, new uh, Broomhouse production is reveling in those kinds of movies. Probably. Oh my god, she's a witch! And also, it's it's like what Adam of your movie success has said. Like half of America actually believes in ghosts. So when it comes to going to see these movies on on cinema, you can have uh, some part of a box office guaranteed. In, in think about this with that kind of premise, these movies still tank really hard.
What? It's what? It's oh, Joan, his, his secretary. Oh, okay. Do you really want to bring up Romeo and Juliet as a symbol yeah, for love when your sorry, father is dead? No. Like, no. Oh, wait, that's right. Joan is the woman who has eyes on their father, kind of his girlfriend, potential stepmother. Jesus. Yeah, that's right. We're also doing, I think we're doing the step parent thing as well. Uh. I am. It is radio. You're a ghost. You can pass through the door. But he doesn't want to impede. Uh, so remember, Tim, he can only do that when the plot requires him to. I am acting. Oh, no. His son no, wants to do a magic no. show. This is so insensitive. Believe it or not, his son is mad at his dad for not having time to help him with his magic act. You know, it's not like his father is dealing with life insurance. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's not like his dad's dead or anything. Oh, wait. You know, okay, okay, okay. They try to portray Cosby as a jerk here, but he's doing his best to make sure his family is covered. Yeah, he's late about it, but... Oh, God. Uh... That's kind of invasive. Also, yeah, also, what, uh, I mean, what position does he hold in for all these people, these old farts actually visiting him? Um, they're, um, they're, I don't know, artists or something. I don't know why, but I feel awfully uncomfortable about this for some reason. Yeah. This whole movie's uncomfortable. Oh, look, a black limousine. Because black is a also, symbolization anyway, of death. anyway, the wind blows, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because he's a ghost, he's incredibly susceptible to the wind. Yes, yes, they're still adding on more rules. Let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's Come go fly, fly a kite. Fly high, lesbian seagull. <laughs> No, no, no Taylor, that doesn't work because there's no seagull. The, the, the Mary Poppins reference works much better. Did you say lesbian seagull? Uh, it's a uh, joke. Be, 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 be uh, some do America. You saw the movie with us, Dwebs. Come on. Uh, Pedro, remember, it's me you're talking about. Not an yeah. excuse. Okay. And, 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 yet, and yet you remember that one character from Phantom Menace who had like a line and showed up for like two minutes. Well, Phantom Venice certainly makes an impression on people, good or bad. True. I know. Well, well so does that movie, and yet... Ugh. Anyway. Yeah, let's just move on. Uh, is this really how you want to tell your girlfriend that you want to talk? I mean, I know the circumstances, but, uh... <sighs> Honey, you're one of the more sane people. You're probably seen Not that, saying so. a lot. Who is she played by? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh Denise what? Nicholas. Oh, okay. Let me check. Was he Mandium P.I.? Oh, she was in Capricorn 1. Why do you neglect your career like this? Anyway, what I was oh, trying to say earlier. Oh God! Was, yeah, uh, go ahead, Pedro. N n never mind. Actually, I think I finished it for. Yeah, I, I think you did. This is a family picture. I'm I'm just trying not to pay attention to this. Jeez. There... Uh, no, oh, please, no. Oh please, wow! Please. So a thousand words took inspiration from this. Not just that, Jova. David Cage probably saw this as well. He's like, oh yeah, this whole necrophilia thing is probably has something to it. I'll try this as well. How dare you use the saxophone in coalition with this, you movie! 
Uh, what, a, what, a, what a surprise! This was the actual last film that Sidney Poitier actually directed. I think uh, he just nothing can kill a, a, a man's career like a movie like. Ha! Huh. So apparently, he actually got to do it with her somehow. I guess he concentrated hard enough. <laughs> I don't want to know the details about ghosts. And now we're going right back to a meeting with them in his living room in the dark, and there are lamps on. I mean, I mean, how would how would how would writing a fanfic like this go? It was so good, so you came right through me. I dare say fanfics Thanks, have please. better pacing than this. Good night. Uh, let's let's use that um, Yako clip. From, oh, that's uh, right. This is a... good night, everybody. Oh yeah, that's right. This is a typical time where everything has to go wrong for him. Because we gotta need that cliche. <laughs> I'm so... This movie's so tiring. Well, it's nearly over. We're two-thirds of the way through. Not, oh, not, not the worst sorry, is yet to come to it. keeps begging the question. How? How did it manage to go so wrong? Yeah. This is like that project where, you know, you have to imagine everyone was thinking, do we really want to go further into this? And, like, they just kept going. Again, it boggles my mind that, uh, well, I, I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt and say that someone in the production must have questioned this uh, well, sooner or later. From what but I heard, Bill Cosby, from what I've heard, Bill Cosby did not really have a pleasant time with this movie. Well, gee, who what did, a surprise. Who, who did? Well, again, he said the same thing about Leonard Part 6. This is legitimately terrifying. Yeah, and this does not have horror mentioned in it. That's another thing. This movie can be freaking terrifying. I, I get it. It's supposed to be, you know, a ghost story and everything, but... Uh... All right, he cannot... Uh... Tormenting the little kid just to get him off his back. That's nice. Ooh. And that's not how scary this movie can get. Now, uh... Oh. Kid, magic can wait. He's trying to get you guys set so that you will have money after he has to leave. Yeah. You know... You know, at least with Hook, when Peter went off at his kids, we could see why he was being a bit jerkish about it. Yeah. This is literally the... Oh, this line. That's what you'd say to the girl's father, right? Put the bitch on. Uh, how? Uh, no. <laughs> You know, I know I should be questioning how he's doing this, but I still have to wonder, what boy is that stupid to say it to the girl's father? And expect to get with her. Uh, can the scene just end, please? Nope. What's supposed to be funny here, exactly? He went Nothing. through the telephone. You know, what actually would make this scene funny if Bill Cosby was, strang was strangling Kevin Spacey. That would be a match that I would love to see. Yes, that would have worked perfectly. Oh no! Oh no! My dad actually, uh, told the boy who called me the B word to piss off. I don't you see, don't you see, Jova? It's because a woman wanted to be treated badly. Don't you know? It's because she feels that she's practically invisible. That nobody but him wants to get with her. <sighs> Like, oh really? You're okay. That's like Vela Swan levels of idiocy. Getting mad at the guy who's trying to actually, you know, stand up for you. How dare you? I wanted him to assault me. Oh, oh, and by the way, that and by the way, his son is still pissed that he's not helping him out with this magic trick. Hey, uh, <laughs> it's not like he's trying to help you financially. <sighs> Seriously. I cannot stand movies that insist that the father character is a jerk when he's not, when you get down to it. The Trunk of Doom? 
also, um, is, she's meant to be a teenager, right? Yes. Yeah. Her actress is in like her early twenties at this point. You know, if it's real dwebs, we show up. Oh fuck, you look. Oh, oh fuck, you look pretty. Oh no, he's flickering out. Uh, a seizure this is, warning. Uh, this is a uh, this is an accurate representation of Bill Cosby's film career at this point. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. It was, it was, it's, this was a film that, that was the last um, bit flickering away into the... Into well, the look place. at the bright side, guys. At least he got laid yesterday. Mm. <laughs> a family picture! From hell! Yeah. Only a, only a Satanist would make this kind of movie. And then Rob Runner will also take a cue from this and make an, an equally disturbing Actually, movie with yeah, her. that was a good point. What was the point of the Satanist in the cab? Oh! Like, I, I, yeah. I get you need a reason to have an incident, but can't you just have, like, a drunk driver? Why specifically a Satanist? Because why get is it, the, it the theme why, of death why, in the afterlife. But why... What the... I don't even... <laughs> How do you even... Also, they were listening to Michael Jackson. I... It doesn't sound like it. Oh, maybe that was David Bowie. Wow, actually. he... The kid actually took the hint. Get the fuck... Also, shit tasting wearing clothes. Was that a psycho reference with the music? Probably. Uh, well, it's sad that the Henry Mancini is probably... Uh... Like... You know, um, I have to wonder what kind of teacher would allow this kind of, uh... Yeah, keep in mind, this is the theme that killed Houdini, you know. Huh. Seems yeah. like I'm gonna have, seems like I'm gonna have to put this kid on daily motion because YouTube for, YouTube for some reason blocks it worldwide, I don't understand. It's just a skit. Jeez, I mean, I have, other, I, have, I have other, I have other Matt TV skits oh, on, my, on my channel and they're fine. Oh no, this scene. Also, hi Donald Trump. Really? Well, I don't know if it's him, but it looks like him to a T, and Donald Trump was cameoing you know, in quite a few films at the time. Well, you know, what, you know Donald, you... maybe you should have pursued this whole acting career. Actually, <laughs> no, because remember, remember, Pedro, systematically, all of all of his, you know, um, properties and uh, things that he tried constantly failed or go went bankrupt. He was in a movie? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, a movie that he starred in? No, no, but I mean, if he wanted to pursue his career, I'm not sure it could have worked. It says something that even Johnny Depp played a better Donald Trump than Donald Trump himself. You see, will we do what you're about? We are what you're doing to us, <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, yeah, he's dead. Unless someone lets him out. Oh wait, no, he has the key in there with him. Backyard. And their instinct is to laugh at the fact that the kid may be, uh... <laughs> because we need, we need to be in the stereotypical school where everybody laughs at people because we're jerks. <laughs> then you act like a jerk sometime. Again, this is the act that killed Houdini. <laughs> Yeah, doesn't the teacher have a save, help, save back plan, backup nope. plan? Ooh, jeez, fuck. I wonder if if he dies. I wonder how those kids will feel now. They'll, they'll probably laugh get that too. Actually, ah, he died. <laughs> like Fucking that. He just Fucking said he hell. can't get out. And their instant. Yeah, that that that, that uh, refer to that sequence in uh, the Death, the Miller and Death Grace movie where uh, Sean Bean picks up the television and slams in on the t on the table. Fucking hell! <sighs> so Bill decided to ditch the meeting. Bill, Bill, Bill. Listen. Uh. That... 
Also, well, your goal is say goodbye to your life people. insurance. Well, okay, I guess on the one hand, it does save his son's life from dying, but he didn't know his son was in this much trouble. Nah. Uh, there you go, putting it up on daily motion. Why don't you just have him do the Urkel and, voice while you're at it? And and the uh, cool fainted again. What is Jill or White actually in this film? No, <laughs> and thank goodness. Remember, Jill White was in remember kids, where a stranger touches in bad places, that's no good. If only an officer who was actually in an episode of House. Oh no, Dr. Martin Luther King is in the cameo on and that poster! Now we're doing Kazam, where Shaquille O'Neal when you need him. My uh, name's the Java, kid and Java, 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 remember what we established. Uh Martin Luther King never existed. Remember, Java, he dies or he never existed. Making a reference to uh yeah. the Wing Commander movie, by the way. Yeah. So wait, hang on, if that's the case if if Bill Bill Cosby's character's dead, shouldn't he have never existed? Mm -hmm. we, well, he's kind of in limbo. Unfortunately, we were not fortunate enough to have that logic in this movie. As stupid as that logic is. Uh, is this the producer of the movie, or is not the actual does, character? Not just that, that's clear abuse. Like, no matter what you work in a company, I think this is not acceptable. This is... Also, uh... I think I've seen the actor on the left somewhere. His boss, yeah, Mr. Cullen, one. is played by Barry Corbin. No, the, the one on the left, the, the, the one that looks more like a pig. Yeah, Barry Corbin, this guy, right? Oh, wait, or are you talking about this guy? The one on the left, Jova. <laughs> the one that doesn't scream. Oh, hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, Collins. That may be Dana Ashbrook? Finally, some actual sense. Thank you. Let me say, let me guess, no. Oh my fucking god. Seriously, like... Uh, and now uh, for the walk of shame. Can can this movie get even worse? Yes, like... yes. It can. Well, the amazed how has only got like nineteen minutes. Guys, this movie is like think of the worst disease you can think of and apply it to a movie form. It just gets worse. Tell, I just realized what. what. How sad is it that of the four movies we've been doing over the course of these days, uh, uh, so far the best one has been the Wing Commander movie. Wait, I don't. I don't hold know. On. You thought Pig, that was right? better than Casper? I, uh, well, well, I'm talking about in terms of which one is the better movie, not which one is more in, in fascinating. On, on well, even still, level, though. Yes, I guess. Even but still, problem, though, I'd argue that Winko, Casper was Winko, a. Oh, Wing Commander had also the problems of being nothing. It was just people talking with each other. Like, at least with Casper, the writing seems relatively fine, you know, on the like, first Like, he, he had the incredible downs, but he also, it was a contrast having uh, downs with ups. Wing Commander was serviceable flat. Yeah, and not to mention that Casper did a better job of being an, an adaptation than this, we commanded. This, on the other hand, is a constant down. I, I haven't found a single solitary enjoyable moment. Yeah. This movie is by no means boring, but it's It's all for the wrong reasons. But now we're actually going to try and get a sad scene. Yeah, no matter what you're going to do, you have not earned it. In but hey, guys, it's not all sad. He helped us some with the magic trick. But you know what is sad? Why? Mm. I'm seeing a I'm, I'm I'm seeing a film tomorrow in the cinema about Winston Churchill, and that's probably going to be more. Oh, the one with this. Gary Oldman. Yeah. Hey, how about that? I see the trailer. It looks promising. You know, that's a thing. Gary Oldman and Johnny Depp both playing huge controversial figures. It's called Darkest Hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the guy who directed Pan, funnily enough. Well, I don't know, dweebs. Uh, seems promising. I may give it a shot, nonetheless. 
Well, it's okay. So now it's yeah, time. Yeah, hold on. Let, I'm, gonna, come back. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the rest on text uh, while the movie goes. Here's the part where he has to tell Joan the truth. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Thank you. Uh. Uh, how can you be sure he's afraid of intimacy after last night? Oh, just in time. Jesus, God. Are you ready for one of the most dumbest plot twists you're ever about to hear? Mm, he's yes, not a ghost. Uh, a... What? Listen. Just listen. British! What? Just keep listening. Why are you still Just in this listen. kitchen? He's in a coma Just ring. listen. What? Listen. Remember when he mentioned the bunny costume thing for a week? So, let me recap, guys. Right. Bill Cosby is not dead. He just got scared out of his skin like a Looney Tunes cartoon. And apparently this is a hereditary trait because it reminds him of the case where his father had to wear a bunny suit for a week to be seen. I... Uh, right. That is the actual plot twist they expect you to take seriously, because, uh, believe it or not, the movie's actually gonna try to be taken seriously after this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the whole him telling people he's dead, the whole him having to try and do for life insurance, the whole him not being able to just tell everyone he's sick so he can't come in, not entirely pointless, since he's still gonna fade away if he doesn't get into his body, but all the same, time wasted. Uh. Yeah. Oh! Yep, so now they have to find his body. So, there you go, guys! I mean, don't get me wrong, I've seen stupid plot twists, but this... This plot twist... Oh, remember how that was originally paid for laughs? Yeah. Yep. Uh... Well, I guess they're looking for his body. He's gonna have to wait because now his daughter is. Uh... Just end movie. Just end. <laughs> so yeah, welcome to movie number five. Now the medical drama. Okay. It's like the only the only thing that can possibly save this movie is George Clooney shows up in his ER. Outfit and deliver us from this movie. See, like, the, these transitions into an actual ER episode. Be careful it's what you wish for. <laughs> Don't you get it, guys? It's subversion on comedy because now this uh, could kill her. Oh, yeah, that's right. Joanne's a doctor there, apparently. Oh, intubation. But. Uh, sweetie, you need to get back into your fucking body. Nope, she likes being a ghost. What? Do we seriously need this subplot? Because she wasn't downstairs oh, to hear the revelation. Because it's, that's how you would react to seeing your unconscious body. Not, not, not just that, Jova. I've seen also other movies trying to do this type of storytelling of people enjoying the fact that they're... Guys, it's not like you're going to stay alive forever. You will eventually die at some point. What's the pressure of feeding he... things up? Yeah, not only that, she knows about the whole fading and free day thing. Uh, sorry, what? 
okay, he's been a workaholic, but the last thing he was was selfish. Just I'm no just movie. That, uh... Oh, by the way, he's still about to fade since it's Thursday night. Basically, he is wasting his time that he could be searching for his body to try and get her to go back into her body. Huh. <sighs> Take all the gas. There you go, guys. I just got the skit ready for uh, for later. Thanks. We're gonna need it. We are. Rest Your really... permission armory. Uh, so I really, admit... I really... You need it. So I really miss nineties Mad TV. So it literally takes her father near to losing his existence for her to finally wisen up. Apparently, yeah. And. Uh... And already. Nope, Just we are gonna drag this out. Movie. You're gonna need to stretch every single second. He still needs to find his body movie. Let me guess it's conveniently placed in the auditory. The what now? Um I think uh, you mean the m Morgue, sorry. Fucking terms. <laughs> Don't you mean ghost dad? Don't you want to do some rolling credits in this movie? Fucking be so... So, garbage. yeah, the whole she likes being a ghost thing, I guess that was nicer all the few, the minute and a half it uh, lasted. Uh, sorry, what? Like... Oh, boy. Welcome to Cop Outs Incorporated. What are, what Need to wrap up your story uh, plot points <laughs> in a nanosecond? Well, we got the perfect cop out for you. How about his body was just conveniently at the very hospital that they took his daughter to because she nearly died from banging her head on the floor in an, in an unfunny comedy skit routine with mm. roller skates. Wait, that was, a, that was a comedy skit earlier? Well, remember, Dwibs, the roller skate thing was originally played for last with the dad, but then it turns out to oh. not be funny because it puts her in a coma. Just enter the body. No, Tio, he may not make it. We really want to yeah, emphasize he may... Sorry, it's not like... Uh... Now, one thing... Doug... I w okay, Pedro, you know what? I wish I was what? playing Murdered Soul Suspect instead. I it, starts that game, with this so... very... it starts with this very thing Bill is doing... And despite being a monotone story, is much more entertaining than this film. So, and way less being spirited. So, like Doug pointed out, what happened to his suit? Like, did his suit die? I don't know. Rest uh, in peace. Uh, at this point, rest in peace, movie that fabric. Fucking... Rest in peace, fabric, 1982-1990. Wake me up uh, before I go. Go. Mm. That's not funny. No. No. That may as well, this may as well have been the tagline on the movie's poster. Ghost Dad, it's not funny. <laughs> like, yes, it is the most to... wonderful feeling, guys. The movie's almost over. That is a wonderful feeling. Yeah, that's a wonderful yeah. feeling. <laughs> also, you know what? I'm willing to actually go a step forward and say this. Movies from Happy Madison. I have terrible comedies in them, and sometimes are also offensive, but I've rarely seen them at this level of offensiveness and mean spiritedness. Wow. Like, I, I can, and also, I can get some enjoyment out of some specific scenes, even in stuff like Pixels, I can get. But this, this is nothing, and it's negative of the world. Wait, was also. that Richard Pryor? Yeah, what are you doing in this movie? Like, are they trying you don't to... fucked up now. Seriously, wh why is all this talent in this movie? Or is it a Richard, or is it a Richard Pryor look-alike? I don't know. It says something when Isn't I'm actually... Isn't he kind of 
Didn't he kind of give up on films after see no evil, hear no evil? I don't know, but you know, it says something when I have to question why people like Don... Also, don't you see, kids? As soon as your the ghost enters your body again, yeah, your ghost enters your body again, you're perfectly fine. No conditions whatsoever. No tiredness, no starving, no thirstiness. You know, you know, it says something when I'm actually considering that this movie doesn't even deserve the likes of Donald Trump in it. Like... Also, that frame rate... Uh... You have to slow it down because triumphant. The only, the only wow. thing that's really missing is ending the movie with a freeze frame. Trump. Wow, the, the, the movie is so bad it's laggy. This music is too good for this movie. Yeah. Harry Mancini, bless him, he's trying. But... Oh, let the, me the guess, so the taxi driver is also alive. Somehow he's perfectly fine. How? I don't And know. how is the taxi also fine? I mean, it also, has... let me get... I'm sorry. What's a car, this? A, a, car, a car that's been pulled into the water, it's practically over. You cannot. And make now it work this again. scene. Let me guess. He checks to see who the driver is, is, finds out, and it's punches him. <laughs> <sighs> Yay, he gave him his wallet back. Get the fuck out. Oh, it's because Wait, he's listen. Satan. You just asked this guy to commit suicide. Uh, and no one and everyone just, is okay with this. Couldn't he have just said, I command you to leave town and never come back or something? No. And that's how it ends. Fuck this, I'm, I'm off the video. Like, I don't even want to see the credits. Yeah, me too. I don't care if it's a post credits. <laughs> I'm gonna check and well, see if there's well, actually... Technically, the movie's still going, because there's still stuff in the credits. The cre the, oh yeah, the there is. <laughs> the credits are rolling, I'm off the video. <laughs> no, 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 the movie's still going, actually. I mean, they're still seeing... Oh, Alright, okay. all right, let's talk to Final Thoughts. This movie is garbage. Like, it's not, it's not even ironically garbage, it's... In speech, I don't want to see it ever again. Not for a generation, not on my own, not even with friends, nothing. This movie is dead to me, for in the most unironical sense. Fuck this, and fuck whoever thought this was a good idea. Like, Go I'm ahead, legitimately Dursi. pissed. Mm. Go ahead, Dursi. This movie sucks. Next. Okay, uh, I'll be okay. I'll, I'll be more. I'll be more elaborate. Um, it's. Like, it's just not funny. There's not the point of a comedy to be funny. I don't think there was one scene where I giggled. Right, now I'm off the video. Yeah. Seriously, there was not one giggle from from me the entire movie, and yeah. that's that's sad. Mm-hmm. I mean, any laughs I think were just out of anguish. Yeah, or anything really, really stupid. Yeah, I'm. That's it. I'm. I'm done. Movie sucks. Next. Pedro? What's it said? The end. Oh, is that all, Pedro? I don't want to give this movie the attention it wants. Fair enough. Okay, folks. What can I say? Like, this is... This has got to be one of the biggest wastes of human talent. Of all races. Again, this is a movie that actually makes me think that Donald Trump has standards. That's how bad this is. Like, I would actually be ashamed if... Well, that may have been Donald Trump. It wouldn't surprise me if that was Donald Trump all the same. Ah! Okay, seriously though, this has got to be one of the most unpleasant films. And like you guys said, this film is more scary than it is funny. Like, like had this been a horror film, this would have made more sense. It's just so unpleasant. It goes way too far with the mean-spirited stuff. And for a family picture, look... I know that kids can handle a lot of heavy stuff, but this is not really family oriented. We kind of started the conflict with Satanism, and we end the film with Satanism being used to tell a guy to essentially go kill himself, and the movie treats this like it's happy. I mean, and the music being used to this movie is too good for this, like seriously. And this seems to be one of those, you know, all-black cast kind of films, so, yeah, this... 
This actually, believe it or not, this is more of a waste than Black Talent than The Wiz was. Well, he got he got Black Panther coming up at least. I mean, seriously, yeah. this, uh, seriously, Toy Care, you're being outdone by Joel Schumacher. That's how bad this is. And seriously, right. the cast here, n no <laughs> one deserved this. No one deserved this. No, no. I mean, bless the cast. They are trying, but the script is just... What happened here? And the plot twist. The plot twist. They pull stuff just out of right field, left field, everywhere. And okay, this is... I'm gonna say it. This is the dumbest take on the afterlife that I've ever seen before. I mean, okay, 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 granted, they do have the saving throw that technically he wasn't a ghost, he was just scared out of his skin. But then you actually hear that plot twist and you realize, was this really better than if he were actually dead? Yeah. Ugh, ugh, it's just, mm, this movie, it's not boring, but if you're gonna go in... I don't recommend seeing it, but if you really want to watch it, come prepared. Come heavily, heavily prepared. And that is all for this godforsaken flick. Which for the sake of ending this commentary on a more positive note, I have prepared something, uh, planning on making this part of the commentary itself, but unfortunately YouTube for some reason doesn't like this particular Matt TV skit, even though I have other Matt TV skits on my account that are just fine, but whatever. Don't jinx it, uh, So we may have to make so the, this... No, so uh, in the commentary, in the description, uh, we will be linking you to my Daily Motion uh, link that I where I have the video. So there's... All right, okay. then... All right. Uh, is everybody ready on the, on zero? I am. As, yeah. And I'm yes. speaking to the audience as well when I say this. Okay. Yes. Three, I'm ready. Two, three, two, one. Mad TV. Yeah, back in the nineties, believe it or not, everybody, Mad TV was a serious competitor to Saturday Night Live. Don't um, you mean Mad? <laughs> funny. It was ba it was actually original uh, the name from a, ma a magazine that was around, but there you go. Orlando Jones plays back Bill Cosby. I love Orlando Jones. Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, someone... Jova. Huh? You're okay. hearing bleeding out of it with the audio. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? You'll be surprised, Liz. <laughs> Is it sad that Orlando is a better Bill Cosby than the actual Bill Cosby in Ghost Dead? Yeah. yeah. Bill Cosby in... Like I, said, like I said, though, to be fair, it was Ghost Dad. I'm going to give Cosby a pass on that, like... Would even Robin Williams have been able to have made that work? Okay, this is Phil Lamar, too. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Samurai Jack himself. Yep. Um, And uh, Deborah Wilson plays uh, the mom. Oh, goody, Deborah Wilson. <laughs> You see, too, I grew up with this Phil Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Ice Cube in the background. Oh, so there you go, Teo. In this version, Bill and his family are crack sellers. <laughs> 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 oh, this is wonderful. Uh, please tell me that this was a recurring skit. No, it was a one-time thing. Oh, well. Also, like, well, better as a one Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Really? Oh, this is all you could get from the crack, son? Come on, Phil. I'm disappointing you. <laughs> Hello? Hi. <laughs> I want to be a voice actor, Pa. Education? 
<risa> ahí va, ahí va. <risa> <laughs> That's all you need to know, Dwibs. Yes. <laughs> oh, snap. We ain't even. That's right. We even gonna dirty our hands. He wants to be a doctor. Prepare yourself, Theo, because you're about to get the best argument as for why you shouldn't become a doctor. All right. <laughs> oh, goody. Yeah, this is gonna be a reach, I guess. Magical school? Yeah. Medical. Yeah, student loan. He's got a point there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oop. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> Pay your debts or taxes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can have a. I break even. Not exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, don't want that. Snoo, snoo, dweebs. Oh, here you go. And there's more. Yep. Yep. There we go. That's there all. We go. Oh. <laughs> so there you go, too. Don't become a doctor, become a crack seller. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I say? I'm sold. <laughs> so, so Jova, what do you think of the pilots? Awesome! I'm can I wait. I'm looking forward to seeing where the show goes. Oh, let's see reviews. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> not they're all cracks. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, even on the DVDs, it, is, it doesn't come uncensored, sadly. Oh, well. This is well, one of those DVDs. Can be part of the joke. Yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> and, right, so it, so this, okay, okay, one okay. Of those things we have. This okay. particular DVD release was from Shout Factory, which is kind of a bit cheap okay. on the cheap. Uh... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, since he's emulating, you know, being on a television station, <laughs> it makes sense that they kept the bleeping out, you know, since he wants to simulate this being an actual, real television broadcast. So, you know what? This helps. <laughs> really? La ladies and gentlemen, this commentary has been saved. Oh, yes. I, I couldn't even imagine it. Over an hour of terror, overturned by seven minutes of joy. Exactly. See you, everybody. See, See you. Yeah.